Remember, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness. <laughs> the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you John Steinbeck's great story, Two for a Penny, starring Claire Trevor. <laughs> third of a century, quality has been a habit with the makers of Hallmark cards. They are the kind of cards you can be proud to send, proud to receive. That's why through the years, Hallmark cards have been America's favorite greeting cards. So if you want to send the very finest, look on the back for the three identifying words, a Hallmark card. These three words are your assurance of finest quality. They tell your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Now to preside over the Hallmark program this evening is a young man well known to Broadway, both as actor and producer, Richard Kalmer. Thank you, Tom Shirley, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. To please critics, producers, and public, an actress has to be good. To please her fellow performers as well, she has to be wonderful. Well, that's just what happened in the case of Claire Trevor. Robert Montgomery and Elliot Nugent, fine actors themselves, have selected Claire to star in the new play that they're producing. Probably they rejoice in the warm humanity that she brings to every role. A quality of performance that caused us on the Hallmark program to scramble after Claire for tonight's play. It's a timely play because it's about the dust bowl. And as was pointed out in the Reader's Digest this summer, there's some fear that the dust bowl may be coming back. We could have starred an undersecretary of the Department of Agriculture using a column of ominous figures for a script, but instead we have a drama about warm human people and a star that even other stars admire. The Hallmark program proudly presents Claire's brother in Two for a Penny from the Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. <laughs> Valley became a desert of dust, and out of that dust came a new breed of wandering men and women and children, Americans whom we named the Oki. This is their story. But who best to tell it? It is history, so why not a historian? No, instead we've chosen a girl named May, who witnessed the parade of the pathetic from a vantage point on a road named Highway 66. All right, May, go on. Go on. Go on. Now? Yes, now. Well, I... I don't know how I got myself mixed up in a deal like this. I'm scared. Talking about history. Gee, I don't know nothing about history. I, I just mind my own business. And that... That vantage point. That, that's crazy, mister. Al's lunch is just a diner like a thousand others on Route 66. Gee, <laughs> no wonder what Al would say if he heard his diner being called a vantage point. He'd laugh. Yeah, I bet you he'd laugh. Because I was that kind of a guy. Anyhow, the day it happened, Al was polishing the chrome coffee urn, and I was clearing dishes off the counter. I can polish from morning till night. It just don't stay shiny. Well, just watch out. You don't burn yourself. Don't say it like you want it to happen. Who wants it to happen? I'm just telling you to be careful. Look, I didn't mean to get you sore before. Who sore? If there's a guy in this world who can talk to a woman, I'd like to meet him. All I said was it's for the good of the play. After all, I closed down. What did you do? Jobs ain't easy to get. It's for the good of the place, I'm telling you. Okay, so it's for the good of the place. Holy smoke, is it so much to ask a girl to smile? I'm selling coffee, not toothpaste. But it don't hurt to smile. Someday I'll get married to some rich guy, and I won't ever have to smile again. Not for the rest of my life. I'm not asking you to smile at everybody. Just at the truck driver. Show a lot of eyes. Smile. And of all people, it's truck drivers. It couldn't hurt. After all, truck drivers is the secret of a place like this. If they like the coffee and the, well, the service, then they stop the irregular. So other people see their trucks parked here, so they stop too. 
Everybody knows a wet truck driver stops as good food. Maybe I should wear an evening gown and look like Joan Crawford, too. All I'm asking is smile. Smile. Call me laughing, boy. Smile. I got to stand behind this hot counter. I got to dish out coffee that burns my hands. I got to listen to that dirty chatter. I got to clear away that dirty dishes. Got to watch the way they look at me. Got to listen to the things they say about me. And you want me to smile. Please, Meg. Oh, please, Michael. You didn't have to break that cup. Okay, so I didn't have to break it. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to nag. It's only for the good I of know, the... I know, I know. It's only for the good of the place. I... I won't take that cup off this out. Gee, thanks. There goes another one of them cars. Yeah. Will I ever stop? Who knows? There ain't even three million people in the whole state of Oklahoma. And it seems like ten million of them has gone by already. Let them go, as long as they don't stop here. Yeah. I don't want nothing to do with them. I hate dirty people. I hate them, that's all. Ah, you hate everything. Do you like dirty people? No. Well, you see, so what are you yelling at me for? Who's yelling? I only started to I know, I know. Smile. Oh, shut up. I don't have to like dirty people. So they better stay out of here. Point. Not on your life. It's just a dino like a thousand others under 66. And all day long, them emotions, they just keep going by in their noisy, dusty little jalopies. They all look alike, too. A dirty mattress on top, tent poles, canvas, and their faces. Skinny, dirty little faces. And kids, every one of them has got lots of kids. But there was that one special jalopy of Okies on Route 66 that day. It looked like all the others. Hot and hands piled in the back. And... What's you crying about, Ma? What do you think? Neither of them said nothing to eat all day. My, it hungry. Get some water, Ma. Pretty soon, Joy. Sure, Joy. Now, hush your crying, Susan. Huh? Yeah? Oh, it's been pretty hot. The boys are thirsty. We'll be stopping soon, boys. Is it much further to go now, Paul? I reckon not. Should be there for a night. Ma, I got a pee. Because you're hungry, Petey. We'll be eating soon, boys. Pretty soon. Oh, we'll, we'll have to buy us some bread. Will it be all right? I reckon so. We gotta eat. Paul. Yeah, what is it? How much we got left? I guess we got enough. Sure, do. How much, Paul? We can spend ten cents for bread. No, 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 don't fret. I'm going to be like this long. We'll get to California and I'll get a job. And, uh, what's the matter, Ma? I'm scared. I can't help fretting, Paul. Not after what we've been through. I told you things are going to be different. I'm just wondering, did we do right? Maybe we should have stayed. What for, Ma? Keep starving. No work back there. We've been for a long time. It was our home. Home don't mean nothing, Ma, and it's nothing to eat. There's no work for a man. Nothing but setting and setting. Watching his wife and youngins going about. Don't you bet none. We're doing right. I hope so. I'm going to get me work. You wait and see. <laughs> That jalopy is heading for Al's place. Of course, I don't know it at the time, and it's a good thing, too, because I don't want them near the place. Well, the rest of that day is like any other. People in big fancy cars stopping, and of course, trucks and truck drivers. For my money, when God got tired of making people, he converted to making truck drivers. They come in two kinds, no good and worse than that. And I got to smile at them. Late that afternoon, a big diesel job rolls in, and the guys get out. Now, get up front, May. Fuck that. Yeah, I'm breaking out in a rash of smiles already. Please, May. Hi, Harry. Hi. The name is May. May, please. Ah, forget it, Al. Sit down, Harry. Yeah. Sure. May, this is Harry, my new help. Harry, meet May, the most beautiful and the oldest tomato between Las Vegas and Cincinnati. Oh, she's beautiful, all right. Hiya, babe. You want some, Java? <laughs> Still the same old May, huh? Yeah, two jets. 
What kind of pie you got? Banana cream, pineapple cream, chocolate cream, and apple. I'll take apple. How about you, Harry? Apple? Yeah. Yeah. Apple. Anything new, baby? Uh, just whom are you addressing? Just her, Harry. Who? Oh, please, pop the sugar, my dear doctor. Ah. Yeah, sugar. Wait, Dorothy. Good. Uh, Something happened to me. What? No, nothing. Nothing happened. What was it then? Well, they nearly switch them to another run. They do it all the time, yeah. Oh. Sweet on you, Sweet on a truck driver? Oh, don't be crazy. Why not? George, you was a nice kid. How do you mean? Why? Oh. Yeah, then what was that next? I heard that some of the boys wanted to get trucks went off the road. Oh, you, you heard? Yeah, I heard. So? No, Georgie was in it. You, too? Oh. Crazy how the things work out. I didn't get even a scratch, and Georgie, he... I'll give me some more coffee, like a good girl. What about George? Killed, eh? <laughs> Georgie gets killed. Well, no. Not a nice kid like Georgie. Yeah, I'm not talking. She couldn't have been more than 24. Yeah, I don't think no difference anymore. That cowboy, that's what they call you. It must have been your fault. It wasn't my fault, it's Elsie. I take a turn as one of them jalopies straight ahead of me. I swear not to hit him and... Well, we just hit a soft shoulder we roll over. Why did you get them open? Thought you would still be alive. They just drive them off the road, they thought. He just thought... Yeah. Tell you what I said before about you. See that joint. Oh, it's okay. Only I never was. You know that. That's true. Right. Great, a slot machine looks like it's carrying a jackpot. Yeah, nobody hit that one-armed bandit for quite a while. Poor Nicholas. Well, there goes. For Nicholas, I'm going to become a millionaire. And hey, maybe I'll even retire from the trucking business, huh? <laughs> Boy, oh boy, that's one way. There's another. Hey, hold your breath, we Well, so I'm a truck driver, is that, huh? What's the matter, man? No, I... I can't help thinking. It's not for them, most of you. George, got it. Yeah, the poor kid dies and everybody wants to forget it as soon as possible. Well, I won't forget it. Not for a long, long time. Hey, Harry, go on. Take a crack at that flap. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, that Harry, you ain't got no initiative, eh? Hey? You know, I always said it takes a guy with initiative to do what he... Gee. A jack? Yeah. Just for the luck, that Harry. Well, Harry, I guess you want me to be your helper now, huh? <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, uh, uh, how are you going to celebrate? How about putting a nickel in the jukebox, huh? Now? Oh. Yeah. There you go. But, well, treat us to some candy, huh, boy? Sure. Let's see, me. what kind of candy you got? It's uh, all in the showcase. Hey, new candy, aren't they? Hey, what's them? Which one? Yeah, them stripey candies right there in the cake. Oh. Oh, that peppermint. Oh, I'll take one. How about you, Harry? After all, it's your treat. You want one of them stripey candies? Yeah, I'll take one. Let's have two of me. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Nothing. That'll be a dime. A dime? Yeah. Nickel a piece. What do you think? They grow on trees? Oh, so sure. Here's a dime. Yes, sir. I'm not sure. I can't help thank you. Please, ma'am. And Oki. Okay. Rolling all over the roads like the ants. Everything but the kitchen sink tied on top of them jalopies. Mattresses, furniture, even chickens, some of them have. Yeah, I keep wondering where they come from. Does that slow down or not? Yeah, and people say they see it. I don't know. I never saw one see it. Well, they ain't never stole anything from us, and they ain't going to. Hadn't been for them. Well, made us an accident for Oh, yeah, it's sure. Well, you better tie yourself down. I think that's one of them okies coming in now. Put me in here, huh? <laughs> There it seems that we're going to just a moment with the second one. This is a nice drama from the pages of the Reader's Digest, America's favorite magazine. 
And now, here's Dick Altman. Since I've been on the Hallmark Show, I've noticed that many of my friends look on the back of the card they send and receive to find the name of the maker. I suppose it's just like looking for the artist's name on a painting or the label in a hat or the maker's mark on China. Of course, some names mean more than others, like the name Hallmark on the back of a greeting card. For more than a third of a century, quality has been a habit with the makers of Hallmark greeting cards. Yes, discriminating folks know that the three identifying words, a Hallmark card, tell your friends you cared enough to send the very best. So when you choose your cards, make a point to look in the back for those three identifying words, a Hallmark card. Like sterling on silver, those three words are your assurance of highest quality. Hallmark cards are on display in America's finest shops and stores. So when you need a card, stop at your friendly Hallmark dealer's for a Hallmark card. And remember, those three identifying words, a Hallmark card, tell your friends you cared enough to choose the very best. And now we return to our star, Claire Trevor, in the role of May from John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath. There's a great deal of tension in Al's diner as the old rattletrap jalopy belonging to the Oakey family pulls up. Bill and Harry, truck drivers, watch the look on May's face as she stares out the window. Hey, get a load of that, will you? I seen broken down jalopy, but that beats them all. You ain't kidding. They didn't leave nothing behind. See what they want, May. So I should give them service. See what they want. So they clear out in a hurry. Don't look good for the place. Okay, Al. But I can get air for the front tire, some water, and, uh... Well, you know what. <laughs> yeah. So, get in water and get him out of here. All right. Yeah? You want something? Please, ma'am, can we get some water? I didn't hear you. Can we get some water, ma'am? Okay, go ahead. I'll keep my eye on the hose. Hey. I sure get thirsty. Climbing hills and all. Go on. Water is cheap. You mind if I give my boy a drink? No, go ahead. Here you are, Joey. Take your drink. Hey, not so fast, Joey. You got time. Yeah, Pa. Oh, it's been so long. I don't feel it's good. Real good. See if you can get it here, Pa. Mm, oh, all right, Ma. I'll ask. Excuse me, ma'am. Well, uh, could... Could you see your way to sell us a loaf of bread? A loaf of bread? You think it's grocery store, mister? This is a diner. I know, ma'am. You got bread, so... Sure, we got bread. We make sandwiches. Do we have bread? Couldn't you sell me a loaf? We need it, ma'am. Awful bad. We need it, too. If we sell bread, we're going to run out. We're mighty hungry, ma'am. Yeah, well, then why don't you buy sandwiches? That's what we sell, not bread. We sure admire to do that, ma'am. But we can't. Got to make a dime do for all of us. You see, we ain't got but a little. Well, you can't get no loaf of bread for a dime. We only got 15 cent loaf. Oh, let them have it, May. But, Al, we're pretty low now. Uh, we got enough. We'll run out before the bread truck comes. So we run out. Give them bread, May. Yeah? For Georgie's sake, I suppose. Georgie, man? Who's Georgie? Don't oh, forget it, mister. Come on in. You can have the bread. No, oh, boy. Stay where you are. Ah, it's okay, mister. Let him come. Thank you. Where are you heading for, mister? California. Can we, Pa? Yeah, California. Uh, how, how things out that way? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Man can get a job out there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Here you are, mister. This is a 15-cent loaf. Now, oh, please, ma'am. I want you... Can't you see your way to cut off 10 cents worth? But this here's a... I can't get all made. Give him the whole loaf. No, he just wants to buy ten cents worth of it. Okay, you can have it for ten cents. That wouldn't be right, ma'am. Go ahead, I'll just take it. Thank you. Here's the dime. Hey, Pa, a penny. You dropped a penny. Can I have it? No, I'll take it, you idiot. Always. I'll take it. Yeah, Pa, sure. Well, I'm much obliged to you. So thank me. Thank Al here. I'm much obliged to both of you. No, forget it. Well, good day. Come on, boy. Boy, got no more business here. Yeah, boys, go on. Get away from that window case. 
getting the glass all smudged up with the faces. Yeah, look at them. Like their faces were frozen to the glass. Oh, look. Come on, Jerry. You heard what the lady said. Oh, look in there. Candy. Oh, honest, Pa. Candy. Yeah, Pa. All kinds. This is a chewy chart. Look, Pa, those long stripes. Oh, peppermint. And then peppermint. Come on, boys. Please. Oh, but wait. Yuck, come on. We better go. Stripey ones, Joey. Did you see the stripey ones? Come on, Petey. Pa says we... Ah, oh, the stripey ones. Ma'am. Yeah? Excuse me, ma'am. Is them penny candy? Which ones? Yeah, Pa, can we have them? Please, Petey. All right, wait, Joey. Is them penny candy, ma'am? You, uh, you mean these? No, the long stripey ones. Right over there, ma'am. Oh, them? Huh? Yeah. I them penny candy, man. No. Come on, boy. We better go. Hey, wait. Send two for a penny, Mr. Well, and give me two of them, please. Here you are, Mr. Take them, boys. Yeah. Hey, look, Mark. Candy. We got real candy. Thank you, man. Uh, my little brother's so had up because... Uh, well, because my mom and pa don't believe in giving a boy too much candy, it's, uh, it, it, it's just not good for him. Is it, Pa? We, we better go, Joey. Here's your penny, ma'am. Good day to you. So long, mister. Good luck. Well, well. Who would have thought? You're a real tough baby, May. You sure should. What are you talking about? Oh, listen to her, Harry. She don't know what I'm talking about. Well, I don't, see. Some wasn't two for a penny candy, May. So what's that to you? Some was nickel apiece candy. So? <laughs> a real tough baby, huh? Ah, uh, you showed them plenty. I'll leave her alone, fellas, huh? Besides, May ain't the one to... Well, they couldn't have nothing to do with Dorothy. That's right, honey. Well, we've got to get going, Harry. We're, we're dropping time. Here you are for both of them. So long. Hey, hey, wait a minute. What is this? Ah, go on, jump in the lake. We'll be seeing you. Hey. The big lug. Ow. Yeah, what do you want? Look, look there on the counter. Look where they left. Huh. Dollar. Yeah. A buck tip. Some hard-boiled truck drivers, huh? So, that's what happened. And you see, it's got nothing to do with history or, or vantage points or, or anything. It's just something that happened. I don't even know why they wanted me to tell it. Honestly, I don't. That was a beautiful characterization. Well, thank you, Dick. I'd also like to thank the Hallmark greeting card people for giving me the chance to play May this evening. Believe me, from now on, I'll be doubly sure to look on the back of the cards I send for that Hallmark label. You won't regret it, Claire. Any more than May regretted selling those youngsters some five-cent candy at two for a penny. You know, I especially like that part of tonight's story. It really said a lot more than just that sometimes hard-boiled people get soft-hearted. I think you're right, Claire. It seemed to me somehow to express a more universal truth. You mean that a child can bring out the best in human nature? Well, more than that, even. I meant that, well, all of us can help bring about a better world. The girl in tonight's play did something. It was small, but it was something toward relieving the distress of the Okies. And we all can do that. Oh, but why do I try to express it? Why don't you read what a real philosopher has to say about it? And the reader's digest. What philosopher? Bertrand Russell. Well, suppose you read what he has to say, Claire, and we'll all listen. All right. There have been in history good periods and bad periods, but neither have been lasting. It's our misfortune to live in a bad period, but it will end. And it will end sooner if we, as individuals, keep hope alive. 
everybody can do something toward creating in his own environment kindly feelings rather than anger, reasonableness rather than hysteria, happiness rather than misery. The sum of such actions makes the difference between a good and a bad world. And so to the man tempted by despair, I say, remind yourself that the world is what we make it, and that through the making of it, each one of us can contribute something. This thought makes hope possible, and in this hope, though life will still be painful, it will no longer be perfect. When you see the signature of Rembrandt or Gainsborough on a fine painting, it is the identifying mark of a master. And on greeting cards, the three identifying words, a hallmark card, are a sign of expert craftsmanship. Because for more than a third of a century, quality has been a habit with the makers of hallmark cards. So always look in the back of the cards you choose for those three identifying words, a hallmark card. They tell your friends you cared enough to choose the very best. And now, you know this is Airmail Week. Airmail is the first to arrive, the first to be read, and the first to receive attention. It's a great service. So take advantage of your opportunities and send your letters and cards, domestic or foreign, by Airmail. Take advantage of Airmail Week. There's a reduction both in domestic and foreign Airmail rates. You're cordially invited to be with us again next week at the same time for another fine dramatic program brought to you by the makers of Hallmark Greeting Cards, America's favorite greeting cards. At that time, we're bringing together an exciting British story and a great British star. The story is a Scotland Yard mystery, and the star is one of the finest actors of our generation, Claude Rain. by Henry Denker from the Reader's Digest, America's favorite magazine. The Hallmark program was directed by Mark Sloan with music especially composed by Jack Miller. Remember, a Hallmark card will best express your perfect taste, your thoughtfulness.